it's scrap tape. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, it's Maria, and today I've got a product from Gypsy Quilter I wanna share with you. I've got some 13 inch scrap tape, and it comes on a 10 yard roll. And I'm gonna show you a really great block that you can make with this. So first off, I'm gonna start with the scrap tape. It is a wash away foundation. And because I want a 12 and a half inch block, I'm gonna cut some 13 inch squares out of this. And from, from one roll, I can get 27 squares. Pop the tape apart. And give you a look at what this looks like. See, it's kind of transparent a little bit. The nice thing about this is that it stabilizes your fabric, making it easy to use your scraps no matter which way the green goes. This 13 inch is perfect for quilt squares. I can get 27 of them from the roll, like I said, or you can cut it whatever size you like. Let's gather some tools to make a string quilt. And I'll show you how slick this works. I'm gonna need a roll of the scrap tape, some fabrics, which I got this beautiful pile of blues and greens and all of this. Push these guys over here for now. I cut some one and three quarter inch strips from white fabric because that's what I chose for the center of my string block. And why one and three quarter? Just because I thought it would look good. So from a width of fabric strip, I can get two blocks and you can see on top of the ruler here I'm gonna have just a little bit of extra, but that's okay, that'll go into a pile for some other scrap project later on. I've already got my Creative Grid mat on the table. This one is the 24 by 36. I've got my 12 and a half inch squared up and fussy cut ruler. The beautiful thing about these rulers is that there are bore holes here, so you are not limited to a 12 and a half inch square. You can do a one and a half up to a 12 and a half very easily. I've got my Creative Grid rotary cutter. Pulled out my seam roller, but a little travel iron would work as well. And I'm going to use some of these GE stickers to mark where that center strip ends up on the block. Grab whatever ruler you like. I like this three and a half inch by 18 for this type of project because it fits great on top of the fabric. I'm going to cut some 13 inch squares so I lined it up with the 13 and the 26. So that gives me 13. I can simply cut. you all have your own techniques for trimming and all of that. You're free to use your favorite. Okay, so start with a square, which in this case is my scrap tape square. It doesn't matter which side you use, it is the same on both sides. The one thing you want to remember is that it is water soluble, so you don't want to spray it with starch or mist your fabrics or use any kind of glue on there because it will start to dissolve and distort and you don't want that while you're building your block. Start with one of your one and three quarter inch strips or whatever width you like. I'm simply going to aim for the corner and the corner, just like that. I am going to use some of my Gypsy Quilter pins to hold it in place. I need my rotary cutter to trim that corner off because I don't need that. And because it's a scrappy block, it does not have to be perfect by any means. And I am going to pick a strip and get started. You can put strips in a bag if you want to. I'm going to lay that right sides together. And the lovely thing about batiks is that it doesn't always matter. 
and I'm going to stitch that quarter inch seam there. If you feel better, move those pins up to the top so you can see them. I simply want them to hold that strip in place to get me started. The nice thing about this project is that it does not have to be an exact seam allowance. It's great for a beginner or even for those times where you just need a fun project to just zip through while you're sewing with friends. So now I am just going to flip the strip over and then give it a gentle finger press. If you want to iron it, I would suggest one of the little travel irons or pull out your seam roller. Once I finger pressed it, I'm going to use that roller. I like to finger press first because that roller will roll creases into it that you're not going to want later on when you trim your block. Okay. I don't know if you can, you probably can't see, but that flattens it out so nice. There's something a little bit therapeutic about rolling the fabric here. A little steamroller. Okay. So now I'm going to grab another strip. I like to go side to side. I want to make sure that the fabric is at least as wide as what the scrap tape corner is because when I sew it, it's going to absolutely cover it. If you come in too short, you're going to end up with a hole that you might not want later on when you trim. And look at this strip. I've got a hole in the fabric, so I'm going to pull another one for that section. There we go. I can use that one with the hole later on when it's a shorter distance. So now I'm going to stitch this, flip it, press it, keep stitching, flipping, and pressing until this whole surface is covered. So after many hours of sewing, well, maybe many, I don't know, I do it here and there and sew a bunch of strips and press them and sew a bunch more, etc. I have got this lovely assortment of blocks. You can see the scrap tape is still on the back. I'm not going to remove that until I trim and put the blocks together. And I actually can leave it until the quilt is quilted and bound and laundered for the first time. It's not going to affect the quilt. However, if you want to remove it before you put it all together, you can. So let's get our fussy cut ruler out and do some trimming. So I'm going to start with the block like this just because it makes sense to my brain to have that white strip going straight up and down. I'm going to lay my fussy cut ruler on top and I'm going to center it in that white strip. And I'm looking right here, you see the one inch square line? I'm eked over the same amount on both sides. The twos are hitting at about the same point. I feel like that looks good right there. So I'm going to get out my GE stickers. I think Gudrun designed these and if I can, there we go. These are a great little tool a project like this because you can mark where you want to line that ruler up again on the next block with these little arrows. Easy to see. And I picked a color that's different than my fabric so it'll stand out. I'm going to turn it now <clears throat> so I can cut up and across. Since I'm right-handed, I'm going to open that cutter up to expose the blade on the left-hand side of the handle. If I were left-handed, I would simply go the other way. And here we go. A 12 and a half inch block. I have a few more to trim now, so I'll be back.
So after all that trimming and how slick that went with the fussy cut ruler and my rotary cutter on my rotary cutting mat, I've got 25 blocks up here and you can see the design that the white center gives to it. So now I think we're gonna have a little fun and rearrange a little bit and maybe come right back to where we started.